Hello, we are up for the next chapter in Friendship According to Humphrey. We're on chapter 12 and it's called Party Hardy. That week, there was plenty of chatter about Richie's upcoming birthday. All that excitement gave me a wiggle in my whiskers and a pounding in my heart. What was this big surprise Richie was talking about all the time? On Friday, Mrs. Brisbane announced that Richie would be taking me home for the weekend. Yay, Humphrey's coming to the party too, AJ yelled. I've never been to a party outside of room 26 before. Overjoyed, I jumped on my wheel and spun as fast as I could. Boing! Og croaked. Oops, I realized that Og had not been invited to the party. What about Og, asked Richie. Can he come too? Mrs. Brisbane shook her head. I think you all, you will have all you can handle. Besides, I'm taking Og home with me. My husband's working on a surprise for him. Eek, I squeaked. It just slipped out. Mr. Brisbane, who I hadn't seen since Christmas, was working on a surprise for the frog. I could feel that green-eyed monster inside me again. I was jealous, a large lump with a ghastly grin. I wasn't proud of myself. Richie was hoping from, hopping from one foot to another, like a frog. By the time his mom came to pick him up after school, we're going to party hardy, Humphrey. Humphrey, he shouted. Try to relax, Richie, Mr. R Mrs. Rinaldi told him as we got in the car. If we're going to have this party, you'll have to calm down. The Rinaldi house was in quite an uproar that night. First of all, there were so many aunts, uncles, grandmas, and grandpas there. I wasn't sure which was which. Everyone was hustling around, moving chairs and putting up decorations in the basement or bustling around the kitchen, cooking. As busy as they were, they all managed to stop and say, Hi, Humphrey, or isn't he a cutie? Uncle Aldo and his wife, Maria, stopped by to help. When Aldo announced he was starting college again, his relatives slapped him on the back and said, Way to go! They were as happy, happy, happy about it as I was. On Saturday morning, there was an even more commotion as Richie's family hurried up and down, ran downstairs, preparing for the party. Aldo and Maria came back to help. Early in the afternoon, Aldo put on a top hat and picked up my cage. Okay, hump, time for us to get our party on. He carried my cage downstairs to the basement. What sights I saw there. The ceiling was covered with balloons of every color. Along the walls were brightly colored booths made of big cardboard boxes. A circle of chairs surrounded a large platform. Happy Circus music was playing, and I could smell popcorn and lemonade. Aldo set my cage on the big table. Welcome to Richie Rinaldi's Crazy Carnival. Step right up, one and all. Aldo's... Soon, my friends from room 26 made their way down the stairs. Gail and Heidi, not together, of course. Kirk, Garth, Mandy, Saya, AJ, and Art, Seth, and Tabitha. As soon as I saw Saya, saw Tabitha arrive, she hurried over. Oh, I'm glad you came, she said. Then down the stairs came Marty. Marty? I blinked hard and looked again. Sure enough, Martin Bean, the guy who was really, really mean, was right there in Richie's basement. My mom made me invite him, I heard Richie tell Garth. He's in my Sunday school class. There's school on Sunday too? Sheesh, you learn something new every day. The kids all brightly put brightly wrapped presents on the table. Most of them said hello to me. Then Aldo said, step right up and play the most amazing games on earth. Each of the booths along the wall featured a different activity. Richie's dad had a booth where the kids tossed rings on empty soda bottles. If three rings landed over bottles, you got a pink ticket. Cousin Mark's booth was featured where you threw a small basketball through a hoop. You got a pink ticket for each basket too. In Grandpa Rinaldi's booth, you had to knock little bowling pins down with a ball. And if you knock them all down, you got a pink ticket. Closest to me was Maria's booth. She had a flowered scarf on her head and a big glass ball in front of her. Come here, Madame Maria, tell your fortune, she said to the crowd. Madame Maria told Mandy that in the future she would eat a lot of popcorn. I think she already did. Then Maria told Kirk that in the future he would have a lot of fun. Kirk always does. There was so much noise in Richie's basement, I was tempted to go into my sleeping house for some peace and quiet, but I didn't want to miss any fun. Then, uh-oh, I noticed someone wasn't having fun. Heidi Hopper was on her way to the basketball booth when big mean beans stood in front of her blocking her way. She moved to the right to go around him. Marty moved to the right and blocked her. What's your hurry, he asked in a nasty voice. Heidi moved to the left to go around him. Marty moved to the left and blocked her. Say the magic word, said Marty. 
please? Heidi said in a soft voice. Can't hear you. Please? Heidi spoke much louder. Marty sneered. That's not the magic word. Guess again. Once more, Heidi tried to go around him and he stopped her. She was almost in tears. This was unsqueakable behavior. Let her go, I yelled. Not that anyone could hear a small hamster over the hubbub. Suddenly, Gail appeared out of nowhere. Stop it, Marty, she said, and she pushed him out of the way. She grabbed Heidi's hand and pulled toward the for fortune telling booth. Come on, Heidi. Marty stood there with his mouth wide open. I could hardly would I believe what I'd seen myself. First of all, I thought Gail was mad at Heidi. Second of all, no younger kid has ever dared to push Marty before, especially not a girl. Gail's a lot stronger than she thinks. You who ladies, fortunes told. Let Madame Maria tell you what your future will bring. Heidi and Gail looked at one another. Step this way, Maria called to them. The two girls scurried over to her booth and sat down as Maria stared into the glass ball. You will be best friends forever, Maria predicted. predicted. Hooray! Heidi and Gail looked happy with their fortunes as they walked away. I heard Gail say, I'm sorry I said you were a cheater. I was wrong. I'm sorry I called you a crybaby, said Heidi. They didn't seem to know what else to say until Mandy raced up and asked if they tried the ring toss game yet. The three of them hurried off to the booth. Those old gold friends, Heidi and Gail, they're back together at last. Meanwhile, Marty seemed puzzled by the whole incident. He stood motionless, watching the other partygoers pairing off and having fun. I guess Aldo was watching because he marched right over to him and said, if you need something to do, I could use some help giving out prizes. Marty didn't answer. And would you rather be with your friends? You do have friends, don't you, Marty? Marty stood like a statue, staring at Aldo. You know, Marty, if you stopped pushing everybody around, people might start liking you. So why don't you come over and do something nice, like handing out prizes? Aldo didn't wait for an answer. He put a hand on Marty's shoulder and marched him to the prize booth. Meanwhile, Richie and Seth cheered on Tabitha if she got three baskets in a row, and Smiley Bear was, Smiley Bear was nowhere in sight. After Miranda and Saya each had a handful of pink tickets, they headed for the prize booth. But when they saw Marty there, they stopped in their tracks. I'm not going over there if he's there, said Miranda. He'll probably steal my tickets. AJ and Art were already at the prize booth, trying to choose from the assortment of little puzzles, paddles with balls attached, and funny cardboard glasses with eyeballs painted on them. Aldo and Marty stood behind the prize table. Hurry up and take something, Marty said in a gruff voice. He tried to stuff the glasses in AJ's hand. Move it along. Aldo nudged Marty. Give them a chance to decide what they want, Marty, he suggested. How about a train whistle? He asked, holding up a big wooden whistle in the shape of a train. Maybe, said AJ. Paddle bowl is always good, said Art. I'll take that. Good choice, Marty mumbled. I'll take the whistle, AJ decided. Thanks. You're welcome. It sounded strange to hear Mean Bean say those words. Kirk rushed to the prize booth where a hand with a handful of tickets. Well, if it isn't Kirk the J... Marty stopped himself before he could finish. Kirk the Basketball King, said Aldo. Pick a prize. Kirk had enough tickets to get a flower with a bulb attached that could squirt water. Good choice, said Marty. His voice sounded different. I guess he wasn't used to saying nice things. At last, Say and Miranda, who had been watching Marty, finally came forward, clutching their prize tickets. Ladies, come get your prizes, said Aldo. Marty will help you. He likes to help, right, Marty? Here are some keychains, Marty told the girls as they nervously stepped forward. Or maybe you like this tic-tac-toe game. Miranda and Saya were obviously surprised that Marty was acting like a human being is supposed to act, and they handed over their tickets. Thanks, Marty, said Miranda, taking the keychain. Aldo grinned, and so did Marty. Everyone was having such a good time. I was tempted to open the lock that doesn't lock and join the fun. While I was thinking it over, Aldo blew a whistle and asked everybody to come over to the center ring for the big show. As I watched my classmates run for their chairs, I realized that I had an excellent hamster's eye view of the center of the ring. There was no need to plan an escape after all. Once everyone settled down, Aldo took center stage, waved his top hat dramatically. Ladies and gentlemen, get ready to be dazzled by the one, the only, the amazing Magic Mitch. Amazing Magic Mitch turned out to be a tall, skinny man, also wearing a top hat. His long blonde hair touched his shoulders. He had an oversized black jacket with a red and white striped t-shirt and wore red rimmed glasses. 
Aldo applauded and the rest of the audience joined in. Magic Mitch carried a table in one hand and a suitcase in the other. He put the suitcase on the table and pulled out a large black wand. Now I understood, amazing Magic Mitch was a magician. I heard about magic shows, but I had never seen one before. My whiskers started to quiver as the act began. He talked the whole time he performed his act. Talk, 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 talk. First, he started out with a card trick. He brought AJ out of the audience and asked him to pick a card, memorized it, and returned it to the deck. The magician mixed up the cards and asked AJ to pick the other card, to pick another card. The card AJ selected this time happened to be the exact card he picked the first time. Think it's a trick deck, asked the magician. Yes, said AJ. So Magic Mitch called Tabitha out of the audience. He asked her and AJ to check the deck of cards to see that everything was normal. It was. Then Tabitha had to pick a card and memorize it. Mitch shuffled the, all the cards around again. When Tabitha picked another card from the deck, you won't believe it. It was the same exact card she picked before. Everybody applauded except me. This guy seemed a little too crafty for me. I decided to keep a close eye on him. Magic Mitch asked if he could borrow a coin from somebody. Marty volunteered with a quarter he had in his pocket. Imagine a grown-up taking a coin from a kid. Mitch rolled the coin up into a handkerchief and it disappeared completely right before our eyes. He shook out the handkerchief, but the quarter was gone. Marty gasped. Somebody should have warned Magic Mitch not to make mean being mad. The magician leaned over and asked, what's that in your ear? He reached out to touch Marty's ear and produced a quarter, the same one Marty had given him. Now I ask you, how can a coin disappear into thin air and then turn up into somebody's ear? This guy was cheating, cheating, cheating. Next, Magic Mitch had the nerve to ask if the birthday boy had gotten any paper money for his birthday. Richie came up and gave the magician a brand new dollar bill. You won't believe what Magic Mitch did with that dollar bill. He folded it up, took out a pair of scissors, and cut it into small pieces. That's the rudest thing I'd ever seen. Even Og wouldn't do something like that. Richie's eyes were practically popping out of his head as Magic Mitch took the pieces of the dollar and put them in his fist and waved the magic wand. Nothing happened. I forgot to say the magic words, he exclaimed. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo, you will see money grow. This time when he opened his hand, the dollar bill was back, all in one piece again. Thank goodness, or I think Richie would have been pretty angry. Magic Mitch asked Saya and Mandy to help him with a trick where he cut up a rope, did some hocus pocus, and returned it into one piece. And Art helped him make a glass of water disappear under a handkerchief. I mean, a whole glass of water. Everybody seemed to like the show, though. They gasped and clapped at everything he did. Finally, he announced the big moment. Ladies and gentlemen, at this point in the show, I usually make a rabbit appear out of my hat, but today, my rabbit's on strike. So I'm going to borrow your class hamster for this amazing trick. It took me a few seconds to realize the class hamster was me. Richie came to my cage and gently picked me up, cupping his hands. Don't be scared, Humphrey. It's only a trick, he whispered. I knew that, but I didn't want to be cut up into pieces or just disappear into thin air. No wonder the rabbit went on strike. Since Humphrey's already here, I can't pull him out of my hat, so instead I will make him disappear into my hat. Magic Mitch held his hat upside down and let everybody who wanted to come up inspect it. Everyone agreed it was an ordinary hat. Mitch took me from Richie and put me in the hat. It was dark, dark, dark inside, I have to admit. I don't like dark places. As he dropped me down, he pulled something with his finger, and I dropped into a secret compartment up the top of the hat. A false bottom came down over my head. I was trapped in a scary, dark place. I could hear Magic Mitch's muffled voice saying, Abra, Humphrey, Abracadabra, Humphrey, dear, I will make you disappear. Whoa, the magician turned the hat all the way around, and now I was laying on my back, feeling a little seasick. Humphrey, where are you? Magic Mitch called out. He shook the hat to show that it was empty, except it wasn't. Ooh, I squeaked weakly and bounced up and down and trapped the stuffy cave. I guess no one heard me, not even Magic Mitch. I could hear the sounds of kids gasping and shuffling around in their seats. Where's Humphrey? I heard AJ ask. Beats me, said Magic Mitch. He turned the hat around and put it on his head. Want to see another trick? Bring back Humphrey, Richie said in a voice as loud as AJ's. Humphrey who? asked the magician. He started to do another trick. I couldn't see what he was doing since I was completely in the dark. Well, if Magic Mitch wasn't going to do anything about that, I was going to do something about it myself. 
I squinted my eyes. I could see a pin of light above me. If I could see the light, there must be an opening there. I crouched in a little space, reached up with my paws and pushed. I scratched and I pushed some more. I may be small, but I'm strong for a hamster. I could hear Magic Mitch, Mitch repeating, now you see it, now you don't. Which shell has the pee under it? Bring back Humphrey, more voices shouted, but Mitch ignored them. Now I could see a lot more light. The top of the hat was opening from all of my pushing. There was a space barely big enough for me to squeeze through. I pushed myself with all my might and popped right out of the top of the hat. Top of the hat. I could see my friends from room 26, Richie's relatives, and also Marty Bean all staring at me. Magic Mitch kept going, even though nobody paid attention to him. There was a giggle, pointing, nudging, and nodding. The giggling turned to chuckling, twirling, laughing, and howling. Now you see it. Now you don't. Mitch sounded confused. Folks, are you paying attention? I could hear my name being whispered. I stood up very tall as everyone stared at me. Greetings, one and all. I squeaked as loudly as I could. This produced shrieks of laughter. I took a bow. The audience members began to shout my name. They stamped their feet and clapped their hands and chanted, Hum free, hum free, hum free. Okay, the magician sounded quite annoyed. I'll bring him back. He took off his hat and there I was, eyeball to eyeball with Magic Mitch. He looked very pale. What are you doing? You ruined my whole show. It's my show now, I squeaked to him. Next time, I'm bringing the rabbit, he said glumly. Nobody else heard him because all my friends continued to clap, stomp, and cheer. Aldo quickly entered the ring and said, let's have a big round of applause for the amazing Magic Mitch. Mitch waved his hat, which now had a hole in the top, and hurried away from Richie's basement as fast as he could. The crowd kept applauding and cheering. I knew they were cheering for me.